Okay, Jai Hind everyone. Uh, today I am going to discuss uh, basic parsing techniques. It is very important chapter and uh, we can say that it is very important topic for compiler design because it is a base for compiler design and everywhere it is very important to understand this parsing techniques. Basically, it is the second phase of compiler where we have to take as input uh, tokens and produce as output uh, pass tree for the particular token system. So this is very important unit and uh, we are using context free grammar for that. So these are my course outlines where we are going to discuss the particular syntax analyzer because this is the phase which create this pass tree. The parsers are the different tools or different techniques through which we can take context free grammar as input and then create the pass tree. Then the basics of context free grammar because it is requirement of that then pass tree, how the pass tree will be generated, then the particular issues which is arised when we are going to pass a particular uh, context free grammar, at that moment we have to uh, remove these left recursion and again the uh, remove uh, backtracking and after uh, uh, removing this backtracking, the left factored grammar will be made. So if we are talking about syntax analyzer, it creates the syntactic structure of uh, the syntactic structure of the given source program. <coughs> it creates the syntactic structure of given source program. <coughs> so, what do you mean by syntactic structure? The syntactic structure is not directly created, that is why a scanner is required. We have already studied in last lecture where I have discussed that a scanner is required before the parser because when you are scanning the different inputs and the different uh, uh, keywords, tokens uh, in the given source program, we can easily define the syntactic structure of those particular tokens. That is why we require the particular program fragment that is basically calculated or computed by the compiler uh, process, compilation process and after that we will convert this into the machine language where we can compute all the particular input and getting the output. So, it is very important phase where it can generate the syntactic structure of the source program. So, this syntactic structure is mostly a pass tree. What is the output of this particular phase is pass tree. The pass tree is what? It is basically a design in which we have take operator as a internal node and operand, operand as x leaves. So, if you are writing plus a b, then you have calculate a plus b and the result will be stored over there. So, this is the basic pass tree phenomena. Syntax analyzer is also known as parser. So, parser is the tool through which we can take a context free grammar or a different tokens in terms of context free grammar and design a pass tree where the calculation and computations background for the calculation and computation will be made. The syntax of a programming language is uh, programming is described by a context free grammar. So, here we are using CFG. We will also use this Bacchus nor form of CFGs. Why CFG is used? Because ambiguity is the basic uh, characteristic of this uh, CFG, and through ambiguity, we have created a lot of uh, uh, different characteristic of the parser by using this context free grammar. So, this is very suitable grammar for this syntax analyzer. The syntax analyzer checks whether a given source program satisfies the rule implied by a context free grammar or not. So, it is very important. So, what will be the indication of the particular uh, context free grammar? It is satisfy source program or not. Only the thing is that if it is easily made without any problem, it will made a pass tree, then definitely you can say that it satisfied the process of parser. Otherwise, it will generate a mass. So, if you are talking about parser, so parser's function is that whatever context free grammar you have taken, if you are generating any syntax for that context free grammar, that must be from that context free grammar and it would be accepted by that, then only the pass tree will be generated. Otherwise, it generates error masses and that shows that this particular syntax, uh, sentence is not for the context free grammar. So, what is the context free grammar? gives a precise syntactic specification of a programming language because context free grammar, if you are going to define this context free grammar, it is defined by A produces alpha, where alpha belongs to V union T closer. 
where v is number of variables, t is number of terminals. So whatever right hand side would contain this and this is generated by a single variable, it is called basically context free grammar. So you can use this alpha for deriving any string. The designing of the grammar is an initial phase of the design of a compiler. A grammar can be directly converted into a parser by some tools. So we are going to discuss those tools or we can say that we have to discuss some basics related to that. In next lectures, we are discussing the different tools for that. So this is the part of syntax analysis. If you are talking about parser, the parser works on a stream of tokens means you have seen that here lexicon analyzer is there. This will provide the tokens for parser and then parser will generate the parse stream. So the input came from the lexical analyzer that will be taking as a output came from the lexical analyzer will be taking as an input for the parser and after that you will generate this parse stream. So <laughs> the smallest item is token when you are uh, generating any pass tree initially we have to take as input as token which is the output of syntax analyzer lexical analyzer and both the phases are required that is very important uh, question why this lexical analyzer is required because we cannot directly create the pass tree it would require a lot of effort to create directly pass tree that's why in between we have to divide the particular program into tokens and after these tokens we are getting a pass tree if you are talking about parsers, so they are into uh, two categories. Why two categories? Because there are two flows of a grammar. You are started from the string and then goes to a particular sentence. And you are started from a sentence and goes to a particular starting symbol. So there will be two modes of that. You have to start with the start symbol and reach up to sentence, derive that. And you have to start with the string and generate it start symbol. So according to that there are two types of parsers. The top down parser, the past is created top to bottom starting from the root. Means we have to start with that start symbol, then applying different derivatives in that and after that we are getting this sentence and check these particular start symbol and sentence will be interlinked or not, will be connected or not. If it is not connected, then there is a problem in the grammar. Otherwise, it will be okay. Similarly, if you are talking about bottom up parser, it starts from the leaves because leaves is a part of sentence where we are taking these uh, uh, accepted languages in the context free grammar and we have to reach the start symbol. If you are talking about top down and bottom up parser, so the things important is if comparatively, if you are making comparative analysis of top down and bottom up parser, the bottom up parsers are very strongest parser as compared to top down parser because some of the problem with top down parser is there because you have to start with this start symbol. If you are talking about, we are uh, using some different notations, LL for top down parser and LR for bottom up parser. So these are abbreviations, but it has some meaning. If you're talking about LL, the first L stand for both the particular cases is left to right scanning because we have to use the left to right scanning for the context free grammar. Whenever we are going to access any grammar, any particular variable of the grammar, we have to use the left to right scanning. This particular L for top down for parser is leftmost derivation means whenever we are going to derive any string from a start symbol to particular sentence we are using leftmost derivation. In the LR parser in bottom of parser we are using rightmost derivation in reverse rightmost derivation in reverse in reverse why we are using that? Because whenever we have approach any start, any sentence to start symbol, it must be derived. If you are taking this particular right order, then it must be derived. Firstly, we have to derive the string in right most derivation that reversely perform. So we will discuss this in very detail in the shift reduce parser, which is the basic parser that. So efficient top down and bottom up parser can be implemented only for subclasses of context free grammar LL for top down parsing LR for bottom up parsing 
and we have around seven or six approaches to generating this pass tree. Okay, if you are talking about in top down, there are uh, uh, predictive parser is there which having backtracking or without backtracking, without left recursion, it will be there. Then in top down parsing, only one approach is there. Predictive parsing, either it would have backtracking that is weakest, and if we are eliminating the backtracking, then it is very recursive descent parser is there. Then in bottom up parser, the shift reduce parser is the base parser. After that, LR parsers are there, they are very strongest. And if you are taking simple LR parser, one is simple LR, then LLR, then CLR. And if you are seeing the strongness of these parsers, SLR is very simple parser and CLR is the strongest parser, but the complexity is also increasing in that way. Another parser is operator precedence parser and that is required, that is required for operator precedence parser. And why this is required? Because we have some ambiguous grammar and when we are going to access those ambiguous grammar, any one parser have not the much capability to handle that ambiguous grammar. So for that purpose, what we are doing? We have to embed the characteristic of this operator precedence parser and whenever we are getting any conflict in the passing table, at that moment what we are doing, whatever operators involved in different operations, we have to compare the priority of those particular operators and whatever operator is suitable for that particular block, we have to eliminate one of them and only one particular suitable operation will be inputted in that particular place. Because the only problem is that whenever you are going to <coughs> access the ambiguous grammar, at that moment there will be a conflict over there. Means you have more than one entries in shift reduced manner. So you have to eliminate one of that. When you are going to eliminate definitely you have to use this operator precedence. So these are the particular bottom up and top down parser syllabus. So these are different tools by which we are taking different grammars and generate the pass tree. So now if you are talking about context free grammar, I have already said that if you are saying that A produces alpha and S V T P is the content of that. S is a start symbol, <coughs> V is set of terminals and variables, T is set of terminals or alphabets and P is the production, that production in the form of A produces alpha where alpha belongs to V union T groups. There are different abbreviations are used for deriving the grammars and placing the values in the grammar. So if you are using capital A, B, C, D, basically these are belongs to set of variables. If you are using X, Y, Z and etc., it is belongs to V or T means it is a grammar symbol. It may be a terminal or variable. You can use this abbreviation for both because in this particular part, we are comparing different grammars to these rules. And every time we have to compare a particular variable or alphabet with the another variable. So we must aware about these abbreviations so that when we are going to compare, we have to clear about which particular variable so which value okay if you are talking about a small a b c d these are basically or 0 1 okay these are basically the terminals so whenever you are going to derive any string means the language accepted by any, any given grammar that is the completely set of terminals only terminals there is no variables if variable is there then it is called right sentence in form <coughs> then another abbreviation is alpha beta and gamma so this is basically, this belongs to V union T closer means it has any number of length starting from 0 up to infinite. So if we want to use any particular length of string for replacing the particular grammar or replacing the particular rule or applying the particular rule, we are using this alpha, beta, gamma. Like if you are, if I am writing alpha, B, alpha b beta so the alpha may be number of values number of alphabets number of variables set of variables collection of variables more than one variable less one variable empty variable anything 
means it is the part of v union two closure t closure similarly beta is also v union t closure only capital v will de decide the rule applying process for the given grammar so it is very important that's why i have just discuss all these particular values in entirely recursive structure of a programming language or defined by a context free grammar so i have this shown mathematically this is basically context free grammar whatever production in this form you can see that it is context free grammar what are these things i have already discussed a finite set of terminal that is called t finite set of non terminal that is called v a finite set of production rules in the following form p is a produces alpha and a start symbol that is s like this this is basically ambiguous grammar and you can say it is operator grammar also ambiguous grammar okay. so this is a kind of uh, you can say that everywhere a produces alpha is there alpha is the collection of v union t closure so this is the example of context free grammar if you are talking about derivations so here you see a produces e plus a that is basically one derivative of that what we are doing we have taken a particular production from the given grammar because it is a rule and we have putting it up e produces e plus e suppose we expanding that so we can put this e may be derived by id replaced by id plus e so this is leftmost derivation if you are again putting this id e produces id this so this is the set of terminals this is the starting symbol so you can say that this particular derivation is basically top down derivation okay the sequence of replacement of non terminal symbol is called a derivation of id plus id from e so that is the example because we have used different derivations to finding or to convert this start symbol into this form in general a derivation step is so this is given by the grammatical method alpha a beta i have already you have to replace this a by using alpha gamma beta so what is replaced a produces gamma so this a is replaced with gamma which is given already in the grammar so alpha 1 derived alpha 2 derived alpha n alpha n derived alpha 1 and alpha 1 derives and derives in one step derives in zero or more step derives in one or more step so we can use star for number of multiple derivations either we are doing if i would write e produces id plus id and we are using here star means we are using we have used number of multiple derivations to finding at this particular state of the uh, statement what is the cfg terminology lg is a language of g the language generated by g which is a set of sentences so here we are talking about the accepted uh, particular language for the context free grammar a sentence of lg is a, star, a string of terminal symbols i have already said that whatever is string is accepted that is set of terminals if s is the start symbol of g then s produces omega where omega is a string of terminals so if connectivity is started from s to omega if correctly we can find out this particular sentence through this s then only it is called the accepted language or accepted sentence for the given cfg if g is a context free grammar lg is a also context free language so language is accepted by the grammar two grammars are equivalent if they produce the same language s produces alpha if alpha contains non terminals it is called as a sentential form so sentential form means it contains non terminals so if it is terminal it is sentence because it is accepted language for the context free grammar but if any one variable is there so you need to remove that variable or replace or derive that variable using some terminal then only you are getting the final sentence and after all our objective is to create the terminals so that we will make the past tree because past tree is only generated for the terminals so these are derivation example e produces minus e minus bracket e you have to replace initially e is uh, replaced by minus e then again that e is replaced by bracket of e then this e is replaced by e plus e then again this capital e is replaced by id and we have to use this so final uh, terminal is minus id plus id similar this is also is there okay so in both the process you have to see that here we are using 
uh, right left most derivation here we are using right most derivation so using these uh, left most derivation and right most derivation we have to generate the particular sentence for a given context frame <coughs> so these are left most and right most derivation we have earlier studies in the uh, uh, automata theory that uh, whenever we have uh, just derive or just replace the leftmost variable then it is called leftmost derivation when we are derived the rightmost derivation definitely it is called the rightmost derivation but if the one variable is in the right hand side then the leftmost and rightmost are same for the particular variable so we will see that the bottom up parsers try to find the rightmost derivation of the given source program in the reverse order and top down parser try to find the leftmost derivation of the given source program so this is the basic difference so whenever you are going to study this whenever i am going to tell or you have refer referred from anywhere you are getting that in top down parser we are using leftmost derivation in bottom up parser we are using rightmost derivation in the reverse now we are talking about pass tree so what is pass tree inner nodes of a pass tree are non terminals the leaves of a pass tree are terminal symbols so inner nodes are non terminals or operators you can say okay non terminals because derive you can uh, use uh, different derivatives different uh, uh, derivations for derive start symbol to particular string so whenever going to design like if you are generating this e produces t e plus a then id plus id and you are going to draw a pass tree then this one is designed by like that so this is very simple approach okay so whatever process that has been applied accordingly you have to design this pass tree so at the internal node you are getting this variables because this variable only have the value of these particular <coughs> leaves operands and then it would associate with the operator and then final value suppose we have using 4 plus 5 here id is 4 this is 5 so 4 plus 5 so here 4 is the value here 5 is the value here 9 is the value but we can study it into the intermediate code generation so pass tree inner nodes of a pass tree are non terminal symbol the leaves of a pass tree are terminal symbols a pass tree can be seen as a graphical representation of a derivation whatever derivation you are using like that e produces minus e so it is derived minus bracket of e it is derived minus e plus e it is derived then minus id plus e it is derived now you have seen the complete pass tree so this is the process to derive the pass tree this is very important part of the parsers ambiguity we have earlier studies in uh, automata theory also and this ambiguity is very important for parsing the string so if you are talking about ambiguity so a grammar produces more than one pass tree for a sentence called as an ambiguous grammar so if you are using leftmost derivation or rightmost derivation for any grammar and if you are getting more than one pass tree then it is called ambiguity like that same string is there id plus id star id so we are derive it from two parts e produces e plus e also derives this e produces e star e also derives this you can see these both trees these are different but derives one single sentence so we are confused which one particular correctly which one is used for derive this string because we have two process so when you are going to convert this into the machine because in machine we cannot tolerate these kind of things so what we are doing we have to eliminate that by changing the grammar or applying some mechanism after generating the pass tree so whatever we are doing but we have to eliminate that because this ambiguity will be create some conflicts in the given table and when we are going to uh, implemented a stack for the particular uh, string at that time we are in trouble we are in contradiction we are not getting the proper answer for the grammar so that ambiguous grammar will be handled by the two different approaches means we have to take a particular parsing technique as well as we have to take a operator precedence grammar operator precedence parser by using these two approaches we are eliminating this ambiguous grammar if for ambiguity for the most parser the grammar must be unambiguous whatever parsing technique we are directly using unambiguous grammar only handled for that 
If you are using any ambiguous grammar, the parcel can fail. Okay. Unambiguous grammar is what unique selection of the past tree for a sentence. So whatever past tree would be generated, that is only generated for the particular string. There is no more than one past tree is there. So we should eliminate the ambiguity in the grammar during the design phase of the compiler. So it is very requirement because it works only for the unambiguous grammar. So we have to do two two works. Either we have to change the grammar or applying some approach to remove that conflict which arised by from the ambiguity of the grammar. So these are two approaches. An ambiguous grammar should be written to the eliminate the ambiguity. We have to prefer one of the past three of a sentence generated by an ambiguous grammar to disambiguate that grammar to restrict to this choice. So ambiguity if you are talking about, so this grammar is ambiguous grammar because same particular past three will be generated. Okay, same sentence, same sentence having more than one past three. We prefer the second past three else matches with the closest. So we have to disambiguate our grammar to reflect this choice. What we are doing? We have to change this grammar into that part. If you are changing this grammar into that part, what we are doing? We have to convert this part into that. Okay. So unambiguous grammar, we have to convert it into that. After that, if you are designing the past three for this grammar, we will not get any particular conflict in that or any uh, two parse tree for a single sentence. So this is the post process. The important thing operator precedence, I have already said that key, there is an operator precedence parser in that process. What we are doing, whatever operators are basically involved to generate this ambiguity or conflict. What we are doing, we have to compare both the operators. We have some mechanism to finding out the suitable operator on that place and eliminate one of the op operator from that operator's operation on that place and only one suitable operation will be placing. So we can use the precedence and associativity rules for that. Then another problem that is arised with the top down parser. So this problem is arised during fetching the grammar of top down parser or predictive parser. So it is very important instruction to give in whenever you are going to uh, access any top down parser at that moment you have to check this left recursion in the given grammar otherwise you will be in trouble after generating the particular pass tree and when you are going to implement any uh, stack implementation for any set of uh, internal uh, uh, set of alphabets or sentences. So left recursion is a problem. Which kind of problem it is that? So if you are writing it, if any production in the form of A alpha by beta. So what is the problem is that it can goes to infinite loop. Every time this A will be derived and it cannot reach any place because we are going to implement into the machine. So for machine, we don't uh, take chance for any conflict during their process. So this is a problem for that. And through that, the particular parsing process may be go into infinite state. So whatever uh, purpose we want to solve through this parsing technique, it will not fulfill through this. So this is very important and that is called immediate left recursion. How we can eliminate that? So what we are doing, we have to eliminate that it, this in the form A produces beta A dash, A dash produces alpha A dash by epsilon. So whatever grammar you are taking in that form, this grammar is free from this immediate left recursion. And when you are accessing this grammar by using top down parser, you can successfully access this grammar if the grammar is able to generate the pass tree for the top down parser. Because it might be the problem, the grammar is not able to generate the pass tree for the grammar. So this is thing. If you are talking about in generalized way, means there are different alpha 1 and alpha 2 like that. This is written over here. A produces A alpha 1 to alpha m, beta 1 to beta m. When we are converting it, then it is called beta 1 A dash to beta n A dash and alpha 1 A dash to alpha m A dash by epsilon. So that is an equivalent grammar for this immediate left recursion. And it is very important 
every time whenever you are applying top down parser predictive parser without backtracking recursive descent parser without backtracking at that moment what you are doing firstly you have to check the grammar for left recursion if there will be a left recursion firstly you have to convert this grammar into that means eliminate that left recursion and convert this grammar like this example this is very important example for top down parser whenever we are going to develop this top down machine top down parser we are using this grammar so firstly you have seen that there is a left recursion in that a produces a alpha a b alpha by beta this one is alpha this one is a and this one is beta so firstly we have to convert it so when we are going to convert it this is equals to e produces e e dash e dash produces plus e dash by epsilon so this is the converted form so eliminate this immediate left recursion and it is very important to remove otherwise your grammar will be not fulfilling the requirement of top down parser <laughs> a grammar cannot be immediately left recursive but it is still can be left recursive sometime there is a indirect left recursion is there okay like that as produces a by b a produces sc by d so what we are doing we have to convert okay thank you very much we will discuss this part in later